In this scene we have a biped running on top of a plane. It uses the popular bees biped file. An animated biped contains multiple bones and we'll try to save the geometry of all these bones as a single object to disk using the XMesh saver. One way to do this would be to select only the biped objects and refresh the selected geometry. But since our biped is actually placed on a layer, we could use the layers option of the XMesh saver. The layers option lets us, with a single click, add all the objects that are on a layer. In this case there are 36 objects on the layer, but only 31 of those are geometry. If we maximize the user interface, we can see the names of the objects on the layer. And we also can see the channels that are enabled for saving and the advanced options. We'll be using the object color and we won't be hiding the original uh, geometry. If we use the columns menu in the upper right corner of the UI, we can quickly expand or contract the user interface. Or we can drag it with the mouse until we get the size that we like. In our case, we are going to save all the uh, bones of the biped as a single mesh. We'll be saving from frame 0 to 320, which is the current scene range. And if we hit the Save button, multiple files will be saved on disk, storing the geometry of the biped on each frame. Once it's done, we get another object. This is the XMesh Loader, which uh, represents exactly the geometry and the animation of the original biped. We could use the layer. There is uh, a separate layer for the XMesh and the layer with the uh, animated character can be hidden. Now we have only our biped in this uh, viewport visible on top of the plane. We could instance this object multiple times and it will play the same animation for each of the characters. We could select the bipeds and clone them once again in order to get a whole bunch of um, characters being attacked by bees. Since uh, our objects are currently instanced we cannot individually change uh, the time offset. We would have to make the object unique. And then if we change the frame offset, the animation will be shifted and will play earlier or later. Let's delete all the clones. We'll select them uh, in the layer manager and then we'll delete them. And we're going to clone our XMesh again, but this time not as instance, but as a copy. We'll create a row of four objects by creating three copies. Then we'll select all the X meshes and copy them once again uh, along the other axis in order to get 16 objects in the scene. Now, uh, if we would take a look at these uh, objects in the MaxScript listener, we could select one of these objects and ask for its properties in order to see what the uh, frame offset properties called. Surprisingly, it's called frame offset, so we can say the frame offset of any object that is uh, called XMesh something. Uh, that means the object name starts with XMesh. The frame offset should be equal to, for example, 10. This shifts all the objects, but we want to randomize this. So we'll use a for loop and say for every object that starts with XMesh, change its frame offset to a random value between, let's say, 0 and 100 frames. If we do this, we'll get all the 16 objects playing back at different frames. They're running off the plane, so we can 
increase the size a little bit of our ground but otherwise we have now the same animation played back with a different time offset. 